So our theme for today is a space to create. And many of you are probably here because you're well familiar with NASA's work in outer space, of course. But I'm here today to give you a different perspective. It's based on NASA's experience in a very different space. The space between outer space and our planet Earth. Because this may be your first big idea. We are the air and space agency, not just the space agency. In fact, our work in air is under the first A of our name, aeronautics. And yes, this work in aeronautics we've been doing since 1917, NASA started right here in Virginia back in 1917. And our knowledge of flight is what enabled us to be ready to go to the moon in the 1960s, and it is why every airplane flying today has a bit of NASA technology on it. And it is also why I'm here today to give you a peek in the future of flight. I'm just one of hundreds of NASA engineers that have dedicated their careers to improving flight on this planet and even others when called to. And flight, for many of us, is our passion. And this is why I am so thrilled today to give you one incredible peek into the future of aviation. And yes, it is just a peek because I don't have time to give you all the great rocket scientist details of what this future world would look like. However, if you're curious about some of the current work we're doing, you can check out our website and get a lot more information about what we're doing today. So we've called this future world of aeronautics the world on demand. Many of you are already used to getting information on demand in your handhelds and laptops, etc. So what is this world on demand? So computers give us information, sure, bits and bytes and electrons, but they don't give us the stuff that we use every day, our houses, our cars, our clothing. And to give you a personal example, on a cold day in January, I'm thrilled that I can be at home and I can download and I can tweet and I can Facebook and all these other things. But on a cold day in January, I also want some socks, some warm socks. And I also want a little warm food and a blanket. And I'm not asking for much, but I am asking for something beyond just information technology. I'm asking for my world on demand. It's a very simple little world, I understand. But you get my drift. It is more than just information on demand. We all need to be close to the resources we use every day. And this is why transportation is directly linked to our prosperity, because we have to have access to resources. So this simple fact about transportation and prosperity is true in every single country, regardless of how big or small your town is. It is so very true. Even consider your own lives for just a moment and how much time you spend getting the things that you want every day. Is it a few minutes, a few hours, even? And then a question to consider. What resources do you want to be close to? Maybe if it's for your family, you want to be close to getting food for your family. Maybe it's schools, maybe it's your job, maybe it's family. If you're a business, you may want to be close to a place where you can distribute your product or get the supplies that your business needs. You can see how transportation is linked to the prosperity of every single civilization. Transportation builds the wealth of communities, of nations, and of our globe. And this fact has been true since the beginning of civilization, where we began by just walking, and then we had horses and mules, and then ships discovered new lands, and we have cars and trains, and then now air. And aviation has shaped our world in ways that we, we can't even understand. We take it for granted, in fact, that it's all around us. But the words, overnight package and eBay would have no meaning if it weren't for aviation. We even enjoy the benefits of aviation in the coffee we drank this morning because those beans likely didn't grow in your neighborhood. And also in the foreign car that we drive or the foreign bark bike that you ride on, we use aviation almost every day of our lives whether we realize it or not. Proximity to the resources that we need is so relative to our mode of transportation. Just consider 10 miles for a moment. Something you need is 10 miles away, and you have to get it for your family or for your business. Let's say you have to walk those 10 miles. It's kind of far. If you're driving, it's a little closer. If you're flying, it's in your closet. So transportation matters to our daily lives, whether we like it or not. There's a really interesting report that's been done by Oxford Economics. 
on the economic impact of aviation. You can get it on the internet. And they called aviation the real World Wide Web, and it's a really interesting uh, report. One of the stories in this report that really uh, stuck with me was how aviation has brought prosperity to even the smallest of towns. It's a little town called Yunnan, China, a very remote little town that produces a beautiful but rare flower. This little town is able to ship their rare flower fresh from their village using air transportation and bring that prosperity right back home to their little village. Even for me personally, I can see the evolution of transportation and what it has done in my family. My grandparents are originally from Grenada, a very small island in the Caribbean. They came by boat from Grenada to Trinidad for more prosperity, a little bigger island in the Caribbean. A generation later, my family, my parents, came from Trinidad to the United States by air, again, for opportunity and prosperity. And so transportation does shape our lives, whether we realize it or not. So where are we today? We have cars, trains, and planes. Seemingly, we can go anywhere at any time. Do we need anything else? Let me challenge us to consider that our world is changing rapidly. We have more people than ever before, and in most places on our planet, the population growth is skyrocketing. We have more need for food and supplies, more impact on our environment. And so let's understand how our global changes are impacting our transportation systems numerically, and while I realize that global change is not rocket science, we are NASA. And so bear with me a little bit while we look at some numbers about the impact of traveling. One study by Texas A&M has a really interesting statistic. It was noting that the total cost of traffic congestion to the U.S. economy and lost productivity and wasted fuel is over $87 billion in one year. Yet another study by the International Energy Agency notes that in just two decades, we're going to need 1.4 billion cars on our roads. And to put that number in perspective, for just 1 million cars, we would need 50,000 football fields of pavement to drive on and park those cars. That same land could have been used to grow crops and feed our planet. And so I hope you get the idea that just merely spreading out on the ground is not a viable long-term solution. But we have air, and we have so much more of it than we do ground. And aviation can provide some critical solutions to our planet. And it's not just about making our airplanes more environmentally friendly. It's that making these lean, green flying machines serve our planet and address it's changing needs. So as we think about this future aviation, many of you might automatically think about the 1960s cartoon, The Jetsons, and each of us having our own flying car. We all want that, right? Because it's all about us, right? So when we look at The Jetsons, you know, aspects of The Jetsons may well be a part of our future. That is true. But I want to challenge us a little bit today and ask you a question. Do we really want the world of The Jetsons? I think our world needs something better than the world of the Jetsons. And to bring it in down-to-earth terms, I think our world needs something that will preserve our history, our small towns, even the local coffee shop that many of us enjoy, the local market that is so beautiful, and yes, even our trees. For me personally, I'd much rather hike on a real mountain, on a real mountain trail, rather than a simulated one with breezes being blown on me by a fan. And I really hope that our fishermen and women can still enjoy beautiful and amazing places like this in our future. So how can aviation help preserve some of these beautiful aspects of our life that we enjoy today, yet still address some of the needs that we have for our changing planets? Let's look at some of the functions that future airplanes can do for us that serve our planet. Starting with the basics. Airplanes of the future can help feed us. We can use aviation to transform both the farming and the fishing industries. We have seen crop dusting, for example, for years. You remember the old biplanes? But these things were loud, they were expensive, they were gas-powered, and they only did crop dusting. What if we had small, inexpensive, quiet airplanes that were flying using renewable energy that could take the farmer and his heavy equipment out to a remote field so unused but fertile land on our planet could now become accessible and productive? In the fishing industries, we can use airplanes Called, this is called the Scan Eagle. It has about a 10-foot wingspan. 
the airplane's already been used in isolated cases to go and find fish. So instead of sending ships trolling and looking for where the fish are, we dispatch one airplane that can survey a large part of the ocean, identify where the fish are, and we can go get them either for fishing or for saving the fish and prevent from overfishing. This same airplane, coincidentally, has also been used to help us hunt down and find the Somali pirates so we could rescue one of our own, a U.S. freighter captain, earlier this year. And this is why I think airplanes are inherently feminine, because they can multitask so very well. <laughs> you know, I'm going to pay for that for my male colleagues for a very long time, but it was so worth it. Um, aviation of the future can also help us transform how we distribute goods and services in a really environmentally friendly way. So this includes getting food and medicine to us in an emergency that medicine can be delivered to your house very quickly. We can use small and very efficient and very environmentally friendly airplanes to distribute these things. And these can replace our large delivery jets that we have today. These small, inexpensive airplanes can effectively give our local mom and pop shops the same cost-effective distribution system our large box stores enjoy today. And for businesses, no longer do you have to go to a large, congested, and very expensive city. You can choose to live outside of this with you, your family, and your business and still have access to the same resources, the same high-quality workforce, because airplanes can bring your workforce and distribute your product for you. Proximity to resources is key to our survival and our prosperity. So I realize this idea of little airplanes flying around delivering things sounds a little nuts, even ridiculous, but just to introduce an idea that in the, air, in the area of technology advancement very often has an idea that at one time seemed ridiculous end up becoming ubiquitous, meaning used everywhere. And we see this already with cell phones today. I mean, who would have thought that these little things would be everywhere? Remember the old landlines? And it's a foreign concept to those of you that are under 30. But we did have landlines at one point. Even for me, my family is from the Caribbean, as I mentioned to you. When I was a kid, my grandma didn't even have a landline on her house. She watched her neighbor's house. We'd dial a million numbers and talk to her, have this really staticky connection, like you were talking to the astronauts in Mars. And then, if someone had told me at the time that just a few decades later, I would be under my uncle's palm tree on a recent vacation, with my hand held, downloading NASA emails, and having a crystal clear connection back to work, I would have said that is ridiculous. Instead, what was ridiculous is now in the palm of my hand. The same is true with aviation. The airplanes we have today have served us very, very well. But the airplanes of tomorrow need to serve us differently because our world is changing. So you may wonder, you may wonder how are all these airplanes going to come together without bouncing off of each other? How is our system of flight going to work in the future? Well, it is going to be different, there's no question. Today, we use what's called a hub-and-spoke network that looks like this, and many of you have seen this before. Airplanes largely fly along predetermined paths to predetermined cities at predetermined times. Even our overnight packages follow these exact same paths. And I would challenge us to say that it's not just our airplanes that are, that are focused on these paths, it's also our thinking. We can take more advantage of the three-dimensional space we've been blessed with in the skies and fly point to point small city to small city to deliver our goods and our resources that we need using all sorts of different airplanes. And let me give you an example of that. This is a toy, but it doesn't have to be. We can use micro airplanes, for example, to inspect the underside of large structures like bridges, buildings, oil rigs, safely without putting people in harm's way and getting more information than we have today. So for all you computer gamers out there, boy, do we have a job for you in the future. We can even use unpiloted airplanes to get right to the heart of a raging forest fire on demand in a fraction of the time we can today. And just imagine having better, better weather forecasts. So again, we can dispatch an airplane to that storm and get a better sense of what's happening in our skies. Even disaster relief can be transformed. Or imagine using unmanned airplanes to patrol our borders and even look for and rescue a child lost in the wilderness. And for our personal lives and our businesses, this means we can live and work where we want to and not be stuck to a certain location. And what was far becomes close now. And what took a lot of time to get now is much shorter. And so personally, what's interesting is that you get your world 
on demand. And you, your family, your business, you become the hub. Because we have effectively an on-demand aviation internet in three dimensions. And by the way, we do have the space to create this. Does this sound ridiculous? Well, based on our history, it should. I got to tell you, I am proud to be a part of an organization that for over 90 years has taken what many have said is impossible or ridiculous and made it possible. And in fact, at NASA, it is this passion to explore and enable the impossible that brings many of us to work every single day. So for me, the impossible is just inspiration. Let me give you another impossible idea to some, to some people, but to us, it is inspiring. What if delivery companies got rid of their fleet of trucks and instead had a fleet of unmanned airplanes to deliver their products and goods? And many, many other examples of beautiful airplanes. And now I'm going to show you what NASA is doing today to break some ground on what these future vehicles will look like. We're going to be looking at really environmentally friendly airplanes that have 70% less fuel. Imagine your car getting 70% better gas mileage. These are the airplanes we're working on today. We're even going to have quiet supersonic flight, so you can go from LA to New York in just two hours without having a sonic boom on the ground, and even commercial helicopters that won't rattle the fillings out of your teeth and can be used to replace commuter trains. And yes, even the personal airplanes, yes, the Jetsons, and, un and unpiloted airplanes that help reduce risk and even development costs. And also imagine freighter airplanes that can go transatlantic and transpacific moving very large, heavy equipment in a fraction of the time that ships do that cross our oceans today, and even small planes that can be used to replace taxis and rental cars. These planes and so many others are part of the aviation network of the future, our on-demand aviation internet in three dimensions. And this internet will serve our globe and its multinational, multicultural needs. This future transportation system will enable opportunities and prosperity beyond what any of us can imagine. And at NASA, we are so ready to create that space. Thank you very much.